Howdy, folks. Greyhawk 404 coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer. Today's video, we're going to do another vlog. We are going to talk about our D&D uh, &D campaign. And um, I promised you guys I would do a quick unboxing of this. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, we even have a bonus item, uh, which I was not expecting. I had forgotten I ordered, so we'll go through that. And... Uh, uh, a couple other tidbits, maybe. So, let's start off with our D&D campaign from last Friday. Now, I normally do these videos on Monday, which would have been yesterday. However, uh, because I do have a full-time job, uh, I worked my regular day yesterday, and then again, then I had to also work last night. So... Needless to say, that didn't leave a lot of time for doing a video or anything, so... Um, uh, and I have a massive headache today as a result of everything that I had to do yesterday, so... Um, I'll struggle through this. We'll get through it. So, uh, last Friday, we were planning on having our regular crew uh, at our game, and if you've been following along uh, with everything... Uh, the where we had left off, the crazy ass gnome illusionist captured the sun, and then some freaking deity came in and destroyed him, crushed him, and, and disintegrated him, and it was a whole shit shit show. Um, it was one of the most <laughs> intriguing sessions of D and D I'd ever had. Uh, so that's where we left off. And if you want to get caught up, you get, you're welcome. Go back uh, and check out all my vlogs. Uh, I keep the campaign rolling along. I, I do a recap every every vlog. So uh, bringing us to this this past Friday, uh, as I said, we were supposed to have the whole crew, but unfortunately, uh, one of the the uh, the main players, Jonathan. Um, he his car broke down right at the end of his work day, uh, which meant he couldn't make it to the to the uh, to the game. And of course, one of our other players is his wife, so neither one of them could make it because she, she had to help go rescue him and they get the car fixed and the whole thing. So of course, they weren't able to make it. Um, one of our other our newest player. Uh, he got called into work at the last minute, so he wasn't able to make it. So it ended up just being myself and the DM and our other buddy who likes to go by Goost because um, uh, he doesn't like his real name used uh, on the Internet. So uh, we'll, we'll just say Goost. And uh, so it was just the three of us. And uh, we uh, decided to make the best of it and... Uh, Goost had not been at the previous week, so he didn't see all the crazy stuff, and he hadn't watched my video, so we had to get him all caught up on all the craziness that had gone on. Um, but then, once that was done, we decided that the DM decided that he could he could role play us through a, a couple other things in the in the town uh, where we were still trying to recover and understand what we had seen and been through and all that, at least for our characters. And my character, the cleric, was at the temple uh, getting training uh, because he had he had effectively leveled up. And uh, the DM, the way he runs it is you have to get training. That's kind of the same way I do it. Um, but he has specific skills that you can train in and so forth. So we did all that. Um, and then uh, Goost, uh, his character... Um, had a little bit of role playing that had to be done where uh, he comes from a very wealthy his character comes from a very wealthy family and his mother dotes on him and so she's been uh, sending gifts to him uh, to try and help him in his adventuring because she's worried about him and he got another one of these gifts uh, this time uh, this time it was some kind of uh, uh, magic item that allows him to heal once per day um, so and being as wealthy as his family is, his character's family, I could see that, I could see her, it seems logical that that's something she might do if she was, you know, a helicopter mom back in the 
fantasy world days, you know. So uh, then with me, uh, a little bit of backstory, which I had forgotten. And in my last video, because I had forgotten it, I didn't mention it, but because uh, my character has no, had no knowledge of this because it was something that, that Jonathan's character had done. If you remember, I said that we brought back the this crazy crystal um, that uh, Jonathan's character had thrown. Cal, his character had thrown at the at the uh, contraption that the gnome had set up to capture the sun, and it absorbed all this energy and it grew in size like 150 percent, and it became like this dark energy like inside of it and everything, and we wrapped it and were able to take it back and the mages freaked out they could sense it they told us to drop it where it was and back away from it and get everybody out of that part of the city because they had to deal with it and of course i mentioned that that cal uh, he was the one who carried it in in his backpack he, he did it re reluctantly because he he was suspicious that hey they're just trying to they're just trying to get my this is valuable and they just want it for themselves. They're trying to cheat me out of this. That was what he was thinking and all. And so even though we got evacuated, he was able to scale a wall to watch, to try and see what they were going to do with it and so forth. Well, fast forward to the latest one where it was just the three of us. Jonathan had, uh, let me back up one second. When, he, after our characters had all left and it was just... Uh, Jonathan's character, Cal, there, after dropping off this item and everything, uh, he gave my name, my character's name, Clevite, uh, as the person who dropped it off. He, When they asked him who he was or whatever, he used my, my character's name. Because for whatever reason, if it went sideways, he didn't want to get blamed for it, for bringing it back into the city. So the bastard set my character up. Of course, my character had no knowledge of this or whatever, and I, AJ, Greyhawk, had forgotten about this whole, I had forgotten about it, so in my last video, I didn't even mention that, because I had forgotten about it. But in Friday's episode, with just the three of us, I'm in the in the temple there, because I'm a cleric, and training and everything, um, some mages come looking for me, and... We welcome them in, and they explain, you know, they say, well, you're Clevite, uh, and uh, we understand you're the one who brought this crystal back into the city. And I, my character's saying, oh, shit, I'm in trouble now. Something went haywire, the damn thing blew up, or it killed somebody or something, you know. And uh, they say, and I said, well, no, I, it wasn't me. I was with the adventuring party that brought it back, but... I wasn't the one carrying it. It was in someone else's backpack. However, I was part of the group that brought it back. I, I yes, absolutely. Um, but I didn't wasn't personally carrying it. And they said, well, regardless, they said uh, the item is very beneficial to the city now that it has been that it has been um, neutralized or it has been. Uh, contained or whatever they wanted to word it, it says now it's at a point now that the mages have dealt with it that it's actually beneficial to the city, quite beneficial, and therefore it's it's very it's valuable to the city. So it's only right that we reward you for bringing it to us. And they said, however, it was expensive to neutralize the danger and make it useful to us. So we've reduced we've we've taken that part, we've deducted that part from your reward and so forth, but here's what is left. And they have a sack of coins, and they leave it. And uh, it was a thousand platinum pieces, which in first edition is 5,000 gold. That's 5,000 gold. Um, so the fun part about this is uh, Jonathan's character, Cal, he wasn't present at this session. So the way this DM runs it is, if you're not there at the table, your character is not involved. So he has no idea that they've given me this reward. And uh, 
so Clevite uh, thinks to himself, he says, well, first thing I'm going to do, because he knows, he knows Cal's uh, true motives about, you know, he, the fact that he's an assassin type thief and so forth. So he goes and he puts it in the bank minus 500 gold, which of course, being the good cleric that he is, he promptly donates to the church uh, as, you know, as a donation uh, to try and uh, to use for whatever, you know, and and uh, I think I said something like, my character said something like, you know, uh, make sure that um, uh, that the temple gets, uh, you know, refurnished with anything that's 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 uh, old and and dilapidated. Go ahead and replenish it and everything. And they said, no, no, we'd rather use this money to rebuild parts of the city that were destroyed when there was an attack a while back, because there was parts of the city that were just destroyed. And uh, they said. And then there's people that were homeless because of that, and, and we're going to use the money for that. And I'm like, well, yeah, whatever, you know, hey, <laughs> it's a donation. Do what you want with it. I just had an, it was just an idea to try and spruce this place up a little bit, you know. So it's looking a little bit like a dump, you know. So I was like, hey, let's let's fix some stuff up in here, you know. But you no, know, do what you want, you know. So anyway, so that's all that we got done. Really, was the the role playing of them coming back and giving me the reward, and and uh, uh, Goost, his characters, um, uh, getting that gift from his mother and all that. So we didn't get a lot done. But it's going to be very entertaining because this week, when we're all back, of course, uh, it's going to be up to me, Clevite, whether or not I want to um, tell Cal that, I, in fact, I did get a reward and whether or not I'm going to share that with the group or if I'm going to use that every so often to give donations to the church. I mean, I'm not going to use it for myself, obviously, because I'm a cleric and I, you know, uh, I can't, I, I'm not going to be greedy. But I'm thinking, well, wait a second. Could the poor and the needy and the city that needs to be rebuilt and all that, could that all benefit better? Would it be better to just do that quietly or do I fess up to the rest of the group and say, yeah, we got a bunch of money for, for bringing that thing back. And, and, and I, I gotta be honest. If I do tell them, I do have to tell them the amount. I gotta be honest about the amount. It's just a matter of, do I say anything, you know? So anyway, that's the conundrum that, <laughs> that I'm in. Um, okay. So let's do an unboxing of this thing. This is the Descent to Avernus uh, dice and miscellany that I ordered. I pre-ordered it, and it came out basically the same day as the book did. And the reason that I did this, the last time they did this, I think, was... Let's see if I can find a way to get this thing open without having to get a knife or something. Um, the last time... That they did this with a, like a set of dice. I think it was for the uh, tomb, the tomb um, of horrors themed adventure that they put out for fifth edition. I can't remember the name of it. And there was a little box of dice that came with it, or you could order, you could get them separately. Um, but it was it was supposed to be for that expansion, you know, or that adventure. And those were terrible. Um, that was not worth at all what, you know, what you paid for that set of dice. It was just a basic set of dice in a tin, you know. Um, so we'll see what this one, we'll see what this, uh, is all about here. Cause this has extra stuff in it. So that was why I went ahead and decided to purchase it. So first off, so the packaging is pretty nice. It comes out of this plastic sleeve like that um, and then you have you have this which, which is left and just a little cover that comes off and then you have your dice which are all on this tray here and what was weird about this is when I got it I started reading up you know 
on the back of it, you know, what's included. And this is an 11 piece, uh, sorry, 11 piece set of dice, which is weird because, uh, as an old school, uh, gamer, uh, the original sets were, you got a 20, you got a four, you got a four, a six, an eight, a 12 and a 20. You originally didn't even, uh, 10 sided um, weren't even in the original when you would get a set way back when, when D and D first came out. Um, if I remember correctly. And then, because I remember I got my first set and then I had to buy a, a D 10, uh, separately. Um, I could be remembering that wrong, but anyway, uh, then everything graduated to seven piece sets which were all of those, and instead, instead of one D10, you got two, you got percentile dice, and that was a seven-piece set, which was a kind of a standard set, but as anybody who's who knows the real down-and-dirty truth, to be a true set of D&D dice, it has to be a 10-piece set, because instead of one six-sided, you need four six-sided. And that is because if you're rolling a character, the only way the only way to do uh, your stats is to do the uh, method where you roll three, you take the lowest number out, and the remaining three is your ability score. That's the only method worth using. Uh, it's the proper method in my book. That's why all proper sets of dice have ten pieces because you get the four d sixes. Now, having said all of that, so you have 7 and 10, that's the standard sets. You have 7 piece, 10 piece. That's it. This is an 11 piece. For some reason, they give you two D20s, identical. They're identical D20s, and for some reason they have decided that with this particular box, it's going to be an 11 piece set with two D20s. I don't know why. I would have been completely satisfied with it being a 10 piece set, because you do get the four, uh, the four D sixes, you know, and uh, these are your basic um, dice. I got a set at Gary Con the last time I went um, that were pretty cool, and they were fifth edition themed, and the D twenty was um, larger than the other. All the other dice were similar in size, except the D twenty was a little bit larger, and the twenty. See if it's on here. See, this just says twenty. But the one that I have um, actually has the ampersand, uh, the logo, the D and D logo, as the twenty. So that's actually one of my favorite sets now. Um, but anyway, these are these are like copper and gold color in color. Um, I'm not crazy about the color scheme, but I guess it matches this the Avernus theme. Um, and then separately from this, from the dice, you get. It looks like you get a dice box, and there's some stuff inside. Um, okay, so it looks like we have some cards. We have a uh, a demon, a dretch, and then it gives you some background. It looks like on the back, and you have uh, a quasset which is actually one of my favorite creatures of all times. Um, and there's just, there's even, a, it looks like, yeah, there's a baler, a baler demon. That's pretty damn cool. Um, I don't know how I feel about the artwork, this style. Actually, it's, it's not bad. Um, and there's a bunch of these cards. I mean, there's a, actually a shit ton of them. There's a lot of these cards. So... Uh, let's see here. There's a horned devil right there. So, pit fiend. I mean, these are all classics. Pit fiend right there. But again, I'm not too sure about how I feel about the artwork yet. It'll probably be one of those things where it'll just have to grow on me. Um, but overall, um, and like this one here, you know, I don't know if they all say, but looks like they're all. All the uh, background is all written by Volo. If you look at the bottom there, you look at the signature, it says Volo. 
So, of course, that, you know, kind of goes with the fact that he is who he is. And there's something else in here. What is this? Oh, this is some kind of map. It's a map of Avernus. So, and then you have all the demons it looks like on the card on the back. It has the whole thing here. And it, they did it old school. The old school D&D had pictures where they showed things and they would always have it compared to a human. So you could compare the size and everything. I like that. So they did that on here. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is just the... Um, this is just a note from Volo to to the reader, which I guess would be us, of course. So you get the you get the um, and then you get it looks like you get like some type of table to roll on trinkets. One finds, and it's a it's a table to roll on. So I'm not sure how that plays in, but I'm sure that. That plays right into the campaign. And then what you're left with is you're left with these two things, which, there's the, let's do this. So this is the top. And that has, of course, the Baldur's Gate famous skull icon. Um, and it has stuff like on the sides. If I can get my camera to focus on it, it doesn't really want to, does it? It's not going to focus on this. Let's see here. No. You may have to just take my word for it. So, um, anyway, I thought this is cheap cardboard. So you have, there's the ampersand. Um, these, this box is very cheap cardboard. I thought that it was going to be wood. Um, it is felt, there's felt in here, so you can use either of these as dice trays to roll on, I guess, if you want to. And then you can put it together, of course, as your, as your dice box, like so. Um, but, it's very cheaply made. This is, I thought it was going to be a wood box, but I could not be more wrong. So, yeah, the dice can go in here, and then you have your dice box. And of course, you can put all these little cards, I think they'll probably fit in there. Yep, that all fits in there. So, it all fits neatly back together in the box like that. So, I mean, if I remember, I think it was 20 bucks. For this, so um, there you have your unboxing for that. Uh, I I told you guys I would do uh, a bonus item, and uh, I got this today. I'd forgotten I ordered it. This is the D and D Bestiary. Um, it is. I'll read what it says. Record your adventures in these mini notebooks. Attribute some of the Dungeons and Dragons' most beloved monsters. There's what it looks like on the side. And what this is. Now, when I got this, there was no plastic covering this, which I find very odd. I got it from Amazon. It came in the mail in an envelope. There's no plastic covering this, which I think is horseshit. I'm pretty sure that if you buy this in a game store, there's going to be a plastic covering because there's nothing stopping somebody from just doing this and taking one of the notebooks out and putting it in their pocket or something or scribbling in it, you know, screwing with it somehow. I can't imagine that there's not, a, you know, shrink wrap that's supposed to be over this. So, who knows. But anyway, so this little guy comes, this little slip thing comes off. It has some artwork on there. It shows you what they look like. But my camera just does not want to focus on anything today at all. Let's do that and then see if we can get it to... No, my camera says, screw you, we're not going to focus. So, I know I'm not the only YouTuber that struggles with getting their cameras to 
that's about as good as it's going to get right there. Um, but anyway, so there's eight little notebooks in here, and these are not what I expected. Again, um, when I read the description on Amazon, this is what you get, eight of these. You get eight little guys like this, and I mean they're little. And there's two, these, this one's a graph paper one, so this one has graph paper. There's two with graph paper, two with dots, um, two lined, you know, like notebook lined, and then two blank, like for sketching or whatever. And each one is a different, here's the Mind Flayer one right here. So it, this one has the dots in it. And it tells you a little something about the creature right there in each one. And again... These are very cheap cardboard, uh, paper, basically. Um, when I, this was $20 also. And what I expected was I expected um, eight, not necessarily this big, but this is still a mini notebook. But it has the faux leather, you know, and it has a little tassel on it and everything for keep your mar book, bookmark thing. And I expected smaller versions of the, uh, like, eight of these, small, you know, better quality of these type notebooks is what I was expecting, not the cheap paper cardboard stuff. So, there is no way in hell that this is worth $20. It's worth $10. That's, that's a $10 item right there for these little notebooks, I think. Uh, that, that, that's a fair price. I think a $10... Or even like ten ninety nine, be fine. You have a little artwork on the side on the box, you know. Um, but that's a ten dollar item, ten ninety nine, you know, at the most, something like that, or eleven ninety, maybe even eleven ninety nine, but not twenty bucks. No way. Um, anyway, we're getting close to um, thirty minutes here. That gets you guys caught up. Um, Still doing World of Warcraft Classic, uh, fully engrossed. Love that game just like I did the first time. Um, I may have decided to do some in-game footage stuff again. Um, I may take a break at some point when I get to start getting a little burned out and start going back to Steam and doing you know doing some reviews on Steam or something. I haven't decided yet. How I'm just playing it by ear. Um, but that's it, guys. You're all caught up. Uh, tell me what you think below, click like, all that good stuff, and we'll catch you on the flip side.